Hello everyone, today we're going to continue with where we left off last time, and that is going to be with adding some more of the functionality. So right now we just have the posts index page. Let's go ahead and let's create the uh, post show page in our React app. And then for our description, we'll just copy the title again. Not a good practice, but for the sake of video, nobody cares what I type in here. And um, let's go ahead and let's say create a branch. We'll create this branch for us. Click create branch, copy this, we can move it over. And then we will once again do a git checkout for our Rails app here. And then we can go ahead and start our Rails server with a Rails S again. We can come over to our V app or React app and continue on with our lives. So for doing the show page, we're gonna have to do a little bit of magic here because out of the box, Re or React is a single page application. So we have to pretend that we have a way to route here. To do our routing, uh, we're gonna have to, if I move this over, hopefully, uh, we're gonna have to set up a React router. So in our app.jsx here, instead of just doing this return, I want to actually wrap all of this inside of a router component. And then to do this, uh, we are going to have to import something, which is gonna be a tool called uh, React Router DOM. And then that's gonna require us to uh, import the browser router as just the word router. Then let's do a npm i for our react-router-dom. So that'll go ahead and install this dependency for us. We can do an npm run dev afterwards and we should uh, hopefully be fine, but this is going to be uh, upset with us because of this uh, router tag right here because I put the router in the wrong place because JavaScript is hard. Uh, except this is pretty much just standard HTML stuff that I'm complaining about right now. <laughs> uh, but okay, we now have this. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at how we want to use this. I think a good place to start would be to uh, maybe do like a uh, quick little nav bar. So we can do this nav bar above uh, our post list. It's going to throw an error because we don't have a nav bar yet. So let's go ahead and let's import a nav bar just wherever. This is going to come from our components and our nav bar. Now we could put this in features, uh, but I thought I'd also throw something into components so you have an example of using each. So let's do a, na oops, a nav bar uh, .jsx. And then in our nav bar .jsx, uh, this might actually be a good time to, if, if you're a little bit familiar with React, just see if you can figure out how to do this. Effectively, what I want is I want a posts list link, which is like our root path. Uh, and then next to that, I want to have a link to create new post, which is like our post form, right? Post form, something like that. See if you can figure out how to do that, if you've used React before, uh, and then we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at this. It's not going to be pretty because uh, I'm not a styler, but hopefully you'll forgive me. So to do this, we're going to have to import React. A lot of the importing React we're mostly just doing for uh, like our just testing later so that it doesn't complain at us. Uh, but we'll import React, and then we're also going to import link from our React uh, router DOM. We'll then do a function nav bar. Uh, and this link and a lot of the React routing is going to change depending on the version you're using. If you're working at a company, you might not be using like version, I think, 6. Uh, in which case, some of the stuff will use like Navigate and I think it's like the History API and other stuff. Uh, and after version 6, some of this changes to just using links. Uh, so that's ultimately going to depend on what you're working with. But okay, we're going to do a return. And then in our return here, we're going to have a nav because it's a nav bar. And then we'll start with a link to our posts list, which again, uh, Visual Studio Code is figuring out right here because of Copilot. Uh, it sees this comment and it pretty much knows what I'm going for here. So it's like, all right, our root path is our post list. And then we need a link to the post slash new if we want to go there, or we can go, just go to slash new, whatever you want to do. Uh, maybe I'll leave it as slash new here just because. And then in the middle, we want to just have a pipe similar to this one. So we'll just use some braces to preserve the spacing inside the string. We can go ahead and save this. Now, this isn't going to work right now because uh, we once again need to export default our nav bar to get this to actually work. And now if we do this, you'll see we have two links here. If I click on the new, it'll take us to slash new, but nothing will change because it doesn't trigger a re-render yet. We can also go to post list, uh, which is what our root path is gonna be. So right now, the only thing this really does is changes our URL bar up here, uh, but I think that's okay for now. Let's come over to our app.jsx and let's see if we can actually make this do something. So to do something, instead of rendering the post list here, we're going to just render a app routes, and then we can get rid of this post list for now. 
The reason why we're rendering the app routes is because we can create another component here. We can say import uh, app routes from uh, dot slash, you go with dot slash routes, you go with dot slash components, whatever you want to do. We'll just name it app routes. And then in our components, we can right click new file, call this app routes.jsx. And then in our app routes.jsx, we can uh, set this up a bit. So once again, uh, we're going to import React from React. We can then import a couple of route things, which will be our route and our routes, plural. And this is, this is going to be coming from React Router DOM. Then we're going to have to import whatever components we want. So in this case, we have our post list for right now. We'll just go with that. We'll do a function for our app routes. Uh, and then down here, we can once again export our app routes as needed. And then in here, we can do a uh, return. And then in this return, we will return some routes. And then for this first route, we'll just do a route with a path of slash. And the element that we pass in will be our post list. So now when we go to slash as the root of our application, this will take us to uh, this post list component. Of course, right now, this can't be dot slash features. It actually needs to be dot dot slash features because we're inside of the components directory. We can go ahead and oops, we can go ahead and do this. We'll save this. And now we can see we have our component back here, but we can do another one, right? We can do a route for the path equal to uh, like slash new, I think we said. And then our element can just be right, like an H1 that just says new post form. So if we click on new post, you'll just see the H1 that appears that says new post form for now. We can go back to the post list and this is all of our posts. And anytime you want to add a new route, you just add it in here and this will work just fine. You would do something similar if you had like authentication here where you'd have to wrap the routes a little bit differently, uh, but it's ultimately gonna vaguely resemble, resemble this. But okay, let's go ahead, instead of doing a new here, let's do one more, which will be a, oops, a route with a path equal to uh, the posts slash colon ID for our post show page. And for this, we'll do an element equal to, and we'll call this, uh, I think I call this post details. So this needs, oops, this needs to be like this and then like this and get rid of the space. So this is going to be our post details component whenever we go to the route for uh, the uh, post ID, right? So our post details, we're going to have to import that. It's going to look similar to this post list, uh, but instead we're going to call this post details. It's going to come from our features as well. So features, post, post details. So let's go ahead and let's implement this. And now this is where you can sort of see where once you get this, this logic set up a bit, it gets a little bit easier because we just copy and paste a new route. And then we just come in here and we say in our posts, right click, new file, post, uh, post details, I think we called it, uh, dot JSX. And then in our post details, we're gonna do a couple things again. First of all, as usual, we're going to function our post details, oops, our post details. And then we're going to export default our post details. And then at the top here, we need to once again do a import for our uh, use state and then react comma like that. And then uh, we're gonna have links for our params and stuff. So we're gonna have a use params, use navigate and a link. Don't know how, much, how many of those we're gonna be using. And then for some of this other stuff, I'm gonna have to refactor it as we go, because uh, I already have it set up in a, in a service and we kind of want to do this a bit differently. So for our post, we're gonna say post set post and we'll use a use state so that we can change this. For our ID, we'll say we want to use params because we want to get the ID from our parameters. So we can actually just use this thing called use params from React Router DOM, which will just go ahead and get this for us. Then uh, down here, we're going to have to use effect again, right? And then for this one, let's do this. And we want this to change based on the ID. So we put the ID in the array there. OK, now for this, we're going to say this needs to have a fetch uh, current post, which will be async. We can come down here and close this if we need to. Oops, it's just like that. And then for this, we want to do a try. And then we want to do a const response equals await fetch and this is going to be a fetch to the uh what was it it's going to be the one sec uh api like this so say dollar sign api url slash and then the id right which means we do need to import that api url from dot dot slash dot dot slash constants 
Then after we get this, uh, this response, hopefully we can do a check if our response is okay, otherwise throw an error. If our response is okay, we want to say await the response.json, which is gonna look very similar to our, um, it's gonna look similar to our posts uh, index page get request, right? But instead we're waiting for the response for a specific post. And then we can just say, all right, if this works, get the response.json and then call set post on that singular response.json, which will give us access to it. We can then, after we do this, because we have a try right here, right? Uh, after we do the try, we can do a catch and then we can just console log if something went wrong, right? Now this is gonna be our entire fetch current post right here. Afterwards, we want to call this function, which will get rid of that error because it's no longer not being used. And then the other thing we want to do here is, uh, and I think actually we, we might not be using navigate. I think navigate is used for deletion. So we'll worry about that in a little bit. Uh, and then down here we can do a return or our div, and then we can close this div. Uh, we want to do a return for a uh, h2, which will be our post.title again, just like that. And then we could do a p tag for our post.body post.body and then if we want to you could do like your edit link here or you could do a link to your root path if you want to uh, or you could have your delete button here but for now let's just leave it like this so now if we come over to what would be like slash post slash one I guess uh, I don't know if we currently have a post one uh, but if we come over to our app here we can hopefully see so now let's go ahead and let's try to go to like slash post slash uh, I don't remember what numbers we had. Let's try to go 10. Right now, 10 isn't going to work. It's going to tell us uh, cannot read property null from our title. So our set post right here, our use effect to fetch the current post isn't currently working. So why do you think that is? Maybe pause this for a second, see if you can diagnose what this error is, and then we can come back to it. It's actually, I mean, it's it's just as obvious as you think it is. Uh, but maybe just take a look at it and see what you can come up with. Okay, so the reason why is uh, we're not checking if the post is null. So if the post post is currently null, maybe you want to say like you're you're returning loading instead, uh, because you'll see it shows up here. But initially, it is going through here. It does this await? This happens. It gets down here before it finishes, like it, before it does the check to the API and gets the response and all of that. So it doesn't always exist. And when it doesn't exist, you just very quickly want to return loading. So maybe like in your post controller here, if we come up to our app, our controllers, our API v1 post controller, if we go to the show page, let's just do like a, I don't know, let's sleep for three seconds, for example, right? And then we can come over here, or sorry, over here, when we refresh the page, you'll see loading appears for about three plus some change seconds, and then it changes. So if there's ever a delay in your application, it's actually gonna get to that point where it tries to uh, return this post before it gets the response from the API. So in that case, you're gonna wanna do that check, just see if it exists, and then if it doesn't, uh, leave it as a loading. This is also where you might have like a state that you're using that you then end up setting. So this is where the loading and the set error came from earlier where you would want to change this to loading. You would then want to set the, uh, the loading to false after you do this. So like set loading false right here. And then right here, you would want to do not a check for if, uh, if not post, you might want to do something that just says if loading is true, return loading, for example. Uh, that ultimately depends on how you want to set this up. I'm just going to leave it like this for now, because I think this is uh, a bit clearer for anyone looking at this that we're just checking if the post doesn't exist yet. But okay, that's going to do it for our post show page. Next time we'll take a look at editing or deleting a post or creating it, whatever I feel like doing. Uh, but for now, that's going to do it. So let's go ahead and let's uh, commit this code. So let me exit out of here and then let's do a git uh, status and check what we've changed. We changed the package.json, makes sense, our app.jsx, our components, and our post details. Cool. Git add dot, git commit dash m add routing and post show page, which makes sense because our branch was the create the post show page and we needed routing to do that. And now we have the post show page. Let's do a git push. Let's push this up. We can come over to our, uh, our GitHub page again. We can go to the code. We'll see this PR is ready to be created for this branch. So let's compare and create pull requests. We'll say this addresses uh, number three, I think we called it. Number three, create the post show page. 
create the pull request. We can come down here. If you ever wanted to see what was changed, just click on files change and you can do a review of your PR and see all of the silly little mistakes you did. Uh, and then go ahead and change them, push up those changes and it'll automatically update here. And then you can go ahead and merge the pull request. And this should also close our issue for us. So we can see now we have two closed issues. So yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next one.